This is the assembly video for the H7 block. And this block has been modified for English paper piecing. And the only modification is that it just eliminated this outer border. And the reason for that is because when you put sashing on it, it already borders it and frames it real nice. So this way you're not repeating effort from a visual standpoint. It gives you a bigger piece to work with. And larger pieces generally are usually easier to deal with. So I have my block laid out right here. And for those of you that know these videos, I will lay out my um, block pieces when I'm doing my prep. I will lay them out and I will have my little um, arrows. And my arrows are so that my fabric has all the same direction. But when I went to do my block prep, which to put my pieces on my fabric, I wasn't really paying attention to my fabric and I didn't pay attention to the fact that there's a very slight stripe on this yellow. And I'm not sure why I missed that, but I missed it. So what's happened is all of these have the stripe going against the hypotenuse of the triangle, which is fine. And so I'm going to do this here. They're going to, the stripes are going to go up and down on both of these and side to side on both of these, which I personally don't have an issue with. My issue though is with this because the stripe is going on the 45. I'm not exactly sure how that happened other than the fact that the fabric must have been cut and the, the fabric design had a 45 degree stripe. And when I put my triangles on, I put them on with you know, like where they matched up so they would use more or use less fabric. And I must have did it on the 45, which is how they ended up going on the straight grain. So I will probably replace my centerpiece fabric so that it goes up and down or, or whatever. I'll have to see how much fabric I have left and whether or not I can find it. Anyway, so for the assembly of this block, I am going to take and baste my pieces and when I ba I'm going to base these big tri big squares. And my big squares, I based opposite edges and then opposite edges. And then I'm going to assemble these pieces into squares as well. And when I base these, normally I will base this side and then this side and then th the long side of a triangle. I have a habit of doing the last. I'm not sure why I've developed that, but that's just my habit that I've done. But maybe in this case, and we'll see how this, if I remember to do this, I would do this first and then these two after that. Because if I did that, the last bit, this, this would be over here. My tags would be on the outside of my uh, quarter square triangle block. And what that would do is wouldn't, I wouldn't have bunching where the, the tags meet in each corner because if I did it where I normally do it where these long ones fold in all of my points all of my tags are going to meet in each one of these points this isn't going to matter so much because they're going to it's a 90 degree angle so my fabric allowances are going to be somewhere on my there's not going to be any overhang the overhang is going to be over here or over you know wherever it's going to be on one of these corners so if I have this triangle, if I fold it this way, then my tag will be on the outside. If I fold this one this way, it'll be on the outside. But if I fold these in, they're going to touch. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to do this first, and then I'm going to do this so that my tags go out. Now for my assembly order, I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to make these quarter square units. And then I'm essentially just going to have a nine patch block after that's done. So I'm just going to assemble this top row and the middle row and the bottom row and connect the rows. And you can do it on the vertical as well. It doesn't matter. Okay, so I basted my triangles. I basted the long side first and then I did these two. And I'm going to put these together. These are taped together so that I can then sew those together. And then I've done some of my squares. Um, and this one is sewn together, and this is what I was talking about with the tags. This way, with the, the tags are pointing out, then you don't have to worry about them hitting each other, and you get a more of a crisper, cleaner seam. So that'll go there, and then I will base these two, and that will be my bottom row. 
So I've got all of my quarter square triangle units assembled, ready to go. This particular row is already uh, stitched, ready to go. I decided to not change my fabric direction. I did find more fabric, but I decided to leave it on the diagonal. And the reason is, is because this one goes up and down on the front and the other ones go side to side. So I would either have to be in line with one or the other. So it kind of fit to me to be in the middle of both. So when I assemble this, my fabric direction will be as such. So I will put this row together here and put this row together here and assemble the rows and we will have a completed block. Okay, so now I have three rows together and I'm just going to connect them and my block will be all done. And now my H7 block is all completed.